Reading with your kids. Hola, ni hao, konnichiwa, assalamualaikum, shalom, jambo. Bienvenidos. Hi, my name is Jed Lee, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast. Coming to you from the beautiful neighborhood of Reedville in the southwest corner of Boston, Massachusetts. We are so excited that you're a part of our beautiful Reading With Your Kids family. Have you connected with us on Facebook? Facebook.com slash Reading With Your Kids. It's at Jedly Magic on Twitter and it's Reading With Your Kids on Instagram. We have a wonderful show to, for you today. We're talking about creativity with Tracy Weldon, author of My Blank Page. You know, I think it is so very appropriate that we're speaking about creativity today because we are just a few days away from the Chicago Toy and Game Fair on Navy Pier in Chicago. It is going to be a celebration of creativity and invention. Your kids are going to get a chance to play with life-size toy and games. So cool. You're going to be able to meet authors, inventors, and you're going to be able to meet me and be a part of our Reading With Your Kids totally interactive booth. Find out what it's like to be a guest on the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Get a recording of you on uh, reviewing one of the many books that we'll be displaying. And there's a good chance that we'll be using your interview in a future episode of the show. You'll also be entered to win our fantastic prize package. It is all happening November 23rd and 24th, Navy Pier in Chicago, the Chicago Toy and Game Fair. And be sure to go to ShyTag.com, C-H-I-T-A-G.com. Use the promo code R-W-Y-K and you can save $3 on every ticket you purchase. And there's no limit as to how many tickets you can purchase. Check it out. It's the Chicago Toy and Game Fair coming up soon, November 23rd and 24th. Navy Pier in Chicago. We also want to let you know that we have a brand new reading with your kids. Certified Great Read. Yahoo Who Celebrating Differences by our friend Jen Olo. I am so excited. This is a fantastic book. You know, the world is a diverse place. People look different, believe in different things, come from different places, live in different ways. And therefore, it's important to teach kids from a young age how special these differences are and that it's just a lovely part of how the world works. Yahoody Who! Celebrating Differences by Jen Olo re- helps reinforce these values and ideas with children. Celebrating Differences is the second book in the Yehudi Who series of imaginary character books. It's a lovely story about Yehudis named Max, Ticker, Aqua, Terra, and Zap, and how they help five friends from a wide range of cultures discover that these differences make them unique and interesting. Our favorite, absolute favorite line from the book is, if we join together and learn from each other, acceptance and love will spread. Check out the full review on our on our blog at readingwithyourkids.com. It's our brand new Reading With Your Kids Certified Great Read, Yahoo Who Celebrating Differences by our friend Jen Olo. Joining us on the line right now from right outside Portland and Oregon. She is the author of the fantastic new children's book, My Blank Page. Please welcome to the show Tracy Weldon. Tracy, how are you? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having me. I am really excited to have you on. Uh, Through the magic of Skype, I am able to look into Tracy's beautiful home, and she is surrounded by this gorgeous – is that an orchid uh, next to you? It is. It's an orchid. Yes. It's my favorite flower, so I have them all over the house. Oh, that is so cool. And it's just – I'm always amazed. Every time I travel down to the rainforest, um, either in Puerto Rico or Panama or Costa Rica, I'm, I'm just amazed at these flowers that we, we absolutely love like orchids and we pay a lot of money for them here in the United States. You just, they're just growing wild all over the place down there. Yeah, it's amazing to see. It is. It is really amazing. And I think my blank page is really amazing, too, because it does something that I am passionate about, which is to inspire creativity in kids. Why don't you tell us all about it? Absolutely. Um, It's a pleasure to talk about it. My blank page is um, a children's book that I had the pleasure of launching this summer. 
And it's a book that inspires creativity in children and really readers of all ages. Um, it's the story of a little boy who's bored with seemingly nothing to do. And he taps into the power of his own mind and uses nothing but a stack of paper and blank pages to embark on a wonderful pirate adventure without ever leaving his room. Um, it's a simple tale about a little boy who really creates um, his own fun by just looking inside himself and using his own creative power. So the book encourages creative play in children and really gets um, readers of all ages thinking about what can I do with a blank page. You know, you're you're absolutely yeah. right. In these days of of technology, where kids walk around with this little rectangular thing in their pocket that it allows them to create videos and to message people all around the world and send pictures and videos all around the world, something I would have would have died for when I was their age. Um, it it, it kind of stifles a lot of that 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 creativity and. You know, you're talking about all the fun that you can have with just a st- stack of blank pages. I-, I remember we've we've hosted international kids in our home, and our first experience uh, was inviting um, a, a couple of, of women from Japan who were studying in Boston uh, to our home for Thanksgiving dinner. And to say thank you, they brought a stack of blank paper. And oh, yeah. after dinner, we spent hours and hours creating origami um figures with just these little squares of paper. It was amazing. That's a wonderful example. You can really just do so much, um, so much family fun, independent play, um, or even creative activities as adults. So I have always believed, you know, with a stack of blank paper, you can do anything. And um, it's, it's neat to hear stories like that. So what inspired you to create a book that inspires kids? Uh, so actually, I was um, pregnant with my son, who's now two, Ryan, and um, I had recently left the um, corporate world, the marketing world, where my daily focus was creativity, and I truly felt I had had so much personal growth in my professional career, career by being able to tap into my own creative energy, and I wanted to find a way to convey that message to him that uh, your your mind really is um, able to take you anywhere you want to go. And I've always been amazed at the power of children's books. Uh, I feel like they take life's most complex lessons and, and values that we as adults even struggle with, and they just really uh, boil it down to a simple core message for children. And I thought that it would be really a really wonderful gift for me to give to him and uh, children in my life and children beyond what I know to share kind of that passion I have for creative energy. And so I, I was visiting a family member on a lake and I just felt inspiration all around me and the story just came to me. And as it was coming to me, I um, did just what the boy in the story does. I grabbed a stack of paper and started to fold and create. And I've also always loved origami. So I just played, and um, the story kind of came to life as I was shaping the paper. So it was a really um, a fluid process, and it started with a desire to uh, share the power of your own mind with my son and children everywhere. You know, it, it, it's interesting. You're talking about creative energy and, and you, you know, taking the stack of, of paper and just kind of having at it. And uh, as an educational magician, I've been to – a number of different conferences, and, and, and I love taking existing magical kind of theories and tricks and, and putting my own spin on it. And so people ask me all the time, where do you get your creativity? Where do you, where your ideas come from? And I, you know, it's just, my answer was always was, I, I don't know, it's just always been part of me. But I, I think, I, I think as you were speaking, I, I, I think part of being creative, and, and please correct me if I'm wrong, is having the courage to to try something that might fail, that probably will fail, that maybe people will laugh at you about. But it's just it's like I, I, you know, we all have ideas, and I think the creative, the people who seem most creative are the people who are have the courage to express those ideas. 
That is such a wonderful point. It is really the fear of failure that stops so many of us from pursuing our creative ideas. And um, it's just so important to start early in life with teaching children not to be afraid to to fail and that it's actually a great way to learn. So you're so right. It, you really need to tap into um, a, a place of raw energy where you just don't let fear overrule you. And I think that's when creativity really flourishes the most. Is there a, a, a secret? Now, for me, for me, I, I don't know what it was, but, but something happened to me in, in high school and college where I get to the point where I didn't care what anybody thought of me anymore. So, it, it, you know, so being creative was like it was OK for me. But is there a, a, a way that, that that we can kind of car- encourage our kids to take those steps, to take those chances to, to share our our, our creative selves. Oh, absolutely. I think there's actually so many great children's books out there um, already that that focus on taking failure and celebrating it. Um, you know, what could that first attempt that didn't work out become? Um, so I, I think, yes, absolutely. Working with kids from the beginning to not see failure as a stopping point, but rather a starting point is really key in inspiring creativity and getting over that hump where you just, you're not afraid to fail. Um, and you can, you can look for the good in attempts that don't work out. Now you, you alluded to the fact that you had left the corporate world and you were in a very, very different place. You were working with doctors and physicians all around the world. Can you talk a little bit about that and, and how you made the transition into writing a kid's book and what that, what that, that journey was like for you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, oh boy, it was such a fun process. Um, working with physicians was, um, something that I absolutely love doing and I did it for over a decade and it's actually funny because it's not that dissimilar from the process of, of writing a children's book. The medical world is generally void of um, typical creativity that you would find in um, in an artistic space and so I was able to work with physicians and pharmaceutical companies to bring some creative energy to um, kind of a, a Dale way of communicating with people, patient literature, patient brochures, websites, um, ad campaigns. And so I focused on helping to come up with creative, innovative, and unique ways to speak to patients. Um, and it, and working with, um, you know, some of the most intelligent individuals uh, around the globe. And what I found is that people of all ages still struggle with creativity and, um, it, if anything, helped prepare me to write the children's book because often when we're struggling with something as an adult, uh, going back to the basics and keeping it simple is the best way to find creative solutions. So we did a lot of creative workshops with the doctors we worked with um, and with the pharmaceutical companies. And I, I really think all along that way, it was kind of preparing me for taking this uh, complex concept of how to take a, a medical concept and relate it to patients so that they could um, internalize it and understand it. Um, it. It was really similar to taking this concept of how do you take something as simple as a stack of blank pieces of paper and turn it into a grand journey that a child can relate to. A lot of the parents that contact me after um, their kids have read the book say that their children will finish the story and grab some paper, which makes my heart so happy. Or several times throughout the day, they'll try and twist a little piece of paper into a telescope like the boy in the book does. And I think that's, you know, really what the goal of the book is, is to get the kids using their their mind and um, exploring their limitless creative power. And that's just what I did with the doctors in many ways that we worked with. So it was um, a surprisingly easy transition. And um, I've always enjoyed watching a project start to finish come to life and bringing a children's book to life and knowing that parents are welcoming, welcoming me into their children's nursery and bedroom um, every you know day and night with the, this book and through this story is really such a gift and brings me so much joy. And I certainly felt the same way when I worked with doctors and was able to come up with some campaigns that reached out to patients and spoke to them in a way that they understood um, so it's it's a very similar process and equally rewarding. Well, you just brought up some uh, a great memory of mine that that rolling up that uh, 
piece of paper into a tube to create a telescope. I had forgotten about that, but I rem- <laughs> as you said that, I'm like, oh, yes, I did that. It was so much fun. And, and, and just getting back to, you know, how we were, were speaking, what we we're speaking about earlier, kids, I don't know if kids do that these days because, like I said, they have this, this piece of technology in their pocket that literally allows them to look into someone's home on the other side of the world. But it's different. It's, 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 you know, uh, I, I don't, I don't know how to explain it, but, you know, looking into that screen doesn't feel as magical as it did when I looked through that piece of rolled up piece of paper. You know, it was, I, I could almost see to the other side of the world through that homemade telescope. You know, I believe in that. When you pick up the screen, you are getting uh, one item at the, at the end of what you're searching for. You're getting a video, you're getting something, and it is, certainly valuable in its own right. But when you pick up that homemade telescope with a piece of paper, it can be anything that your mind lets it. And you can truly imagine, um, you know, the grandest journeys that the world can take you on. So um, I'm a fan of traditional play and really just um, seeing where something as simple as a blank page can take you. You know, I, I thought it was interesting how you were talking about the the experience of working with doctors was very similar to your experience in creating my blank page. And, you know, I look at it and I've, I've had the pleasure. I had had the same uh, physician for myself for 25 years and we became good friends. And and uh, and we had, you know, discussions and, and he would tell me how frustrating it was for him oftentimes because of of. HMOs and things like that. He had to, you know, every, every appointment with the, with the patient was this long. And if they, they showed X, Y, or Z, you gave them this treatment. You, you know, there wasn't a lot of room for creativity. Right. And, and he explained to me that a, a lot of the, the real kind of breakthroughs in medicine happened from people who looked at medicine as an art and, and not as a, uh, you know, a, 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 a bunch of formulas and, and, and charts. That's so interesting. And it's actually um, quite fascinating how many uh, medicines over, you know, decades have been created as a mistake. Mm. So it, it is, um, it's the artistic blending of those worlds, you know, the creative space and the medical space, I think, can lead to great innovation, um, much like your physician that you've had the pleasure of being with for so long. Had, had experienced. Yeah. Yeah. I heard that this is, is this one really famous pill that, that was created by accident. I don't know what it's for. I, I so we're going to move on. So now, that you, <laughs> now that you've created my blank page and you've, you've inspired creativity in, in so many kids, is this, has this inspired you to continue writing children's books? Oh, absolutely. Um, I, I have found this to be so incredibly rewarding. Um, you know, I'm so fortunate to get messages from parents that I know, parents that I haven't met, um, just telling me how this book has impacted the lives of their children with creative activities that it inspires them to do. Or um, I just received a video from a friend yesterday who said her son reads it about 10 times a day. And it just really makes you feel um, just just wonderful to know that you've had a positive impact on encouraging a child to put his phone down, put the iPad down, look away from the TV, and just really create something special and unique. Um, I have so many more stories in the works. And... Um, between caring for my two-year-old and I have another little boy on the way, I'm hoping that in time I'm able to bring those to life as well because it has it has been such a rewarding process. Well, uh, congratulations on the new <laughs> little wonder coming into your life. Thank you. I, I'm assuming, you know, uh, if, if there's a, a family listening to this in, in the car and they're not going to be able to get to the bookstore right away and um, – you know, it's it's going to take a while for my blank page to come come from Amazon. They don't want to download it to their Kindle yet. Uh, can you suggest a, a, an activity that a family can can just do around the house right now that kind of can it, it spark that creativity? Oh, absolutely! One of my favorite activities with 
uh, the little ones in my life is always to make a treasure map in your own house. Um, you know, whether it's finding some toys that you hide or looking for um, just some fun gadgets in the kitchen, a treasure map and a scavenger hunt in your own home can uh, be a really fun family activity or, um, you know, hours of entertainment is what we've experienced. And uh, having the kids draw the treasure map or having mom or dad or grandma or grandpa make one um, with special spots of interest around the house is always one of my favorite starting points for a creative day. Now, for those of you who don't know what that thing that Tracy mentioned was, a map is something we used before there was GPS. It was on paper, and it was very, very helpful. (laughs) But, you you know, you're... That, that brings to mind, you know, something, you know, in this age of technology, uh, I'm amazed that one of the things that, uh, the, the cool kids, one that, you know, that, that, that young people are doing, uh, these days are having those, um, uh, oh, what are they called? Just, um, uh, they look kind of like the little scavenger, uh, escape the room things. Oh, yes. You know? Room escape challenges, yes. Yes. And, and so it's like, yes, these young people, they've grown up with all this technology, and it's amazing. And when they get together, they're like, yeah, let's put this stuff away, and let's go into a room and look for clues in our room. We're all craving we're, – we're craving these activities. We're craving our brain to be challenged, um, children of, and adults of all ages. So it is a fun trend, and it certainly um, is a good activity, much like kids getting uh, a challenge around their house to find some, cre- some, some fun areas to play and explore. I'm, I'm wondering, and, I, I, you know, I didn't t- – this, this question just cur- occurred to me. You know, I know that, that, uh, when I go and I work out and I have a great workout, the, you know, the, the, my, my body releases these, these endorphins and chemicals and it makes me feel good. It makes me, uh, you know, get, gives me that athletic high. Is, do you think there's something similar going on when we are creative and, and we get that part of our brain running? Oh, I'm the same way. Um, when I start, when I go for a run, I have to have paper nearby, jot something down, um, grab my phone and take a note. It is, um, I really believe that our brain is something that just, the more we're using and the more creative energy we're firing, the more that it's going to um, evolve and ease, the easier it's going to become. You know, I think of our imagination as a creative muscle. And like any muscle that you have, the more you work it out, the stronger it's going to become. And so I definitely think the more a child's using their mind, their imagination, or an adult, the easier it's going to become and the more those um, those juices get flowing. Absolutely. Well, I know folks are going to want to connect with you and find out more about my blank page and also find out more about Tracy Weldon. So where can folks connect with you online? Absolutely. Um, MyBlankPageBook.com is a great place to read about my background and and really um, my hopes for the book and learn uh, more about the story itself. The book is available on Amazon as well as through the publisher's website, which is AshlynWells.com. And I'm on Instagram. And when I get when I get time and breaks from my busy little boy, I'm posting and sharing about the um, creative activities he does and the fun adventures we take as a family. That is awesome. Well, we've had such a great time exploring creativity here with our, with the author of My Blank Page, Tracy Weldon. Tracy, uh, thank you so much for being part of our show. Good luck with, with your family and, and the new member of the family coming out. And please, please be sure to come back when those new projects are ready. That sounds great. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. Please be sure to join us for the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Our guest will be coming to us from Richmond and Virginia. Her name is Aditi Wardham Singh. She is the author of Strong Roots Have No Fear. That's the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. You know, earlier on, we were celebrating the fact that Jen Ulu's book, Yahoody Who Celebrating Differences, is our latest Reading With Your Kids certified great read. We are so proud of, uh, of Jen Ulu and Celebrating Differences, her great Yahoo Who series. We're, we're really proud of the Reading With Your Kids Certified Great Read program. When we started the podcast, one of the things we noticed was there are so many children's books published every year. Literally tens of thousands of children's books published all around the world every single year. 
we also understood that it is so hard for a, an author, especially an, an independent author, to get their books to stand out amongst that crowd of, of thousands and thousands of books. Well, the Reading with Your Kids Certified Great Read Program has done just that for so many authors. It really is cool. And, and it's also helped a number of families uh, find some great books to add to their family library. We have a, a panel of, of evaluators, their teachers, their kids, their parents. And if they believe that a book is worthy of four or five out of five stars, it becomes a certified great read. And with that status comes a number of fantastic tools that can help your book stand out. Check it out today. It's readingwithyourkids.com. Click on the author services button at the top of the page and find out all about it. I want to thank the folks who made today's show so very wonderful. Of course, we want to thank our guest, Tracy Weldon. Be sure to check out my blank page. I want to thank my amazing producer, Fatima Khan, for all that she does to make the show so fantastic. I want to thank my beautiful wife for all the support that she gives me. I want to thank Audie the Doggy for having me, having my back here in the studio. And I want to thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. And as always, and so importantly, thank you so much for taking the time to make the world a better place. And you help to make the world a better place every time you read with your kids. I'll be looking for the next edition of the Reading with the Kids podcast.